free. Hey there, so this is it. This is the last recording of the year. Um, so, of course, I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do the thing that everybody does. Let's talk about New Year's resolutions. Except, I suspect that my tips might be a little bit different. So, first of all, I'm going to ask you to, you know, don't make one if you don't want to. First of all, it's all about you. It's all about your own motivators. It's all about what happens for you and, and what um, what you have learned in the past is successful for you. So for some people, it helps them to plan ahead, to get everything in place, to like put a date on the calendar before starting something new. And if that's you, that's awesome. Please do all those things and make January 1st your day if you want it to be or not. But some of us, it doesn't help that. When we feel motivated, then then we make the change regardless of the date on the calendar. So knowing that um, New Year's resolutions, having to have it be on January 1st is really beneficial for some people and some people it's not. So just be accepting of that if you're one of those people where it doesn't motivate you. So these tips are in case January 1st is your day to start a new habit and start a new practice and all of those things or not. So three tips, three tips to effectively be able to follow through with your resolutions regardless of the day of the year that you decide to start them. So the first tip is please remind yourself of your motivators. Why are you doing these things? Why is it that you want to go to the gym or be healthy or quit smoking or whatever the thing is that you're planning on doing? Remind yourself why. So when you are writing your reminders or alarms or whatever you're doing to remind yourself of these, include the why. Why am I doing this? How will my life be different after I'm successful than it is before. So that in those moments of those deciding points of, ah, do I have this piece of cake or not? You're reminding yourself why you are making this one tiny decision in this moment. Why are you making this decision? What is the end goal for the sake of what? Where is my care? Where is my why? And a little side note, and we could get into this later on, is if you've ever done any values work or purpose work, attaching it to your values or purpose um, in those whys is also hugely beneficial. So that's tip number one is attach your motivators to your actual resolution. Number two, positive language, positive language, positive language. And here's why, you know, we, I just did a few weeks ago that reminder of, you know, don't picture a pink elephant with purple tutu. Don't do it. Don't picture the pink elephant with purple tutu. Don't picture a pink elephant with purple tutu. It's the same thing with don't smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke. All you're doing is reminding yourself how much you want to smoke. You know, don't eat those sweets. Don't do... What is the positive language? What Because listen, if, we, if we're talking about changing in habits, you can't just take away, away a habit without you know, with substituting another healthy habit in its place. So what is the healthy habit that you're establishing that you want to put in its place? What is the healthy habit that you want to establish? What is the thing you do want to do? So if you are going to quit something like smoking, what are you going to put in its place? What is going to be the thing that you're going to do when you have a craving? And then that is the New Year's resolution. So if the if it's something like one thing that helped me smoke years and years and years ago was a brain teaser. Every time I had a craving, a great friend of mine gave me this like crazy difficult brain teaser. And so I would go and I would, whenever I had a craving, I would try and solve the brain teaser. And I never even really did solve it <laughs> because I ended up, you know, it helped me through. So then the New Year's resolution would be Solve the brain teaser. Do the brain teaser so many times a day so that the focus is on the do, not on the do not. Um, so that's tip number two. And then tip number three is have some self-compassion with yourself. Remember that you're a beginner. Again, the analogy here is, can you imagine if you, as a toddler, the first time you fell on your bum when you tried to walk said, well, that didn't work. I guess I'm just not made for walking. I guess the universe doesn't want me to walk. I guess God didn't give me the type of body that makes me walk. I guess it's just not for me. Oh, well, is me. I'm not the type of person that was meant to walk. Imagine if that's what you said the first time you fell on your bum when you were trying to walk as a toddler. It is exactly the same as now. You were a beginner at this new thing. Have some grace with yourself. Expect 
some dips and valleys and, and all of those things, knowing that that is not a symbol from somewhere more divine, that it's not meant for you. It's just you being a beginner and learning resilience. And that is also a very important le lesson when you're learning new things is you're not only learning the new thing, but you're also learning resilience. And that is a wonderful muscle to exercise. So again, if you're deciding to start your New Year's resolution on January 1st or any other time of year, attach your motivators to the, your reminders and to your mindset around it to use the positive language. What do you want to do? And stop talking about what you don't want to do. And number three, have some compassion for the toddler that is you, the beginner that is you with this new lifestyle. As always, like, share, subscribe, follow all the things, do all the things. But most importantly, let me know how it's going. Ask the questions, reach out to me. I will gladly help you with any of these things. Have a wonderful New Year's and I will see you next year. Bye-bye.